Liftoff of Mission 41B, first flight of the orbiter Discovery, and the shuttle has cleared the tower. Hey guys, welcome to the 25th, and I cannot believe we're at this, the 25th episode of Health or High Water Podcast with my esteemed co-host, Brett Hutari. How you doing, bud? Hey, Trip. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Uh, we have a lot going on, man. We got a grand opening coming up on Saturday, 11 to 3, right? Yes, we do. On Saturday, 11 to 3, correct. Uh, 1472 Jersey Street. If you guys are in the Denver area, make sure you come out, hang out. Got some great prizes, some cool vendors coming out, Ageless. Um, we got O2 coming out. We're really excited to have them. Uh, Relax and CBD will be there. Mm. Really can't wait. But today we're going to talk about something that Brett and I are extremely passionate about and kind of, not kind of, but really what brought us together in this Ascent Performance training journey, and that's working for other gyms. Um, you've had experience with this for a while with working with other companies. Are we, are we going to say the names of the companies in this one? Um, no, I don't think I don't th- I don't think it's important to to say names of companies. So, yeah, this episode, the point of this episode, you know, Trip and I were talking about uh, what to do with as we figure out what the most important content is to bring and things to talk about surrounding wellness. And, and this episode, we want to go into a lot of this geared towards gym owners, um, g- general managers of fitness centers, and then focus primarily on boutique fitness franchises. We wanted to discuss mainly the things that surround that and some of the problems in the industry. Um, and then hopefully there'll be some crossover for members of gyms as well and just kind of tie that into the future of fitness. Well, I, I agree. And I, I think it, you know, all gyms, as a matter of boutique or whatnot, all starts with the environment you put your client in. The team you put together, the brand you have, it, it all comes together and, you know, we both have our experiences and whether it's, um, I guess, uh, commercial and then and then um, smaller business owned, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. S- smaller o- owner owned. And the guys, the reason Brett and I started this is because, you know, people are being treated as numbers and not people. And that's kind of where it starts is, you know, with the people and what you're kind of bringing in here. Um I know. So you worked for Box Gyms before. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of give you a little, uh, without saying the company, give you a little background of that and well, you so know, what your problems are with it. I worked at Anytime Fitness was the first job. I interviewed f- probably like 17 different interviews. It took me forever to get hired. Got hired at Anytime Fitness a long time ago. Um, it was a franchise, Anytime Fitness. I think that at one point they had up to 5,000 locations. Um, and now I want to say they're at like 3,500 locations. Um, it's a 24 hour gym. You can go 24 hours. I'd say they average about, um, say they average about maybe six, five, 500 members for the gym. And then they have a personal training department. How many trainers are in there typically in a, in a place? Usually like, that? like, well, now you, sometimes you see four or five, but never are they all full. It's like part time. Most of them are part timers. In fact, I don't see a ton of like full full time trainers, um, and they're kind of shifting away from independent contractors now as a whole. Which I was an independent contractor for a long time, and I loved it. And uh, now they're shifting to employees uh, primarily. Do you know why? Um, is, is that is that is that something that they've been working towards while you were there? Or? Well, yeah, they they have more control. They can have more control over what you do, um, how they decide to run the business. But the thing is, is that like, first of all, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. It was great. I learned so much on my own, uh, training. Um, and then, uh, I got a chance to work at a lot of these different anytimes. And then I saw a lot of the struggles that they had as businesses. So were you ever a GM at one of these anytimes? Yeah. So I've been a GM at five different locations. But not just any times. Not just, just any times. Time. Correct. All right. So total at, at boutiques. So looking at all of them together. Mm-hmm. All right. So you have all the way from boutique to corporate to all around. By, you, franchise own, uh, independent franchise own to yeah to corporate so, own. So, so what is, what's what's one thing that you you see that all of them are doing wrong as companies that all of and them as, are as doing owners. Wrong? There's got to be some correlation for for all of them. I, I mean, or. Mm want to be cleaning up shop well um franchises are hard to run in general because you're giving profit right off the top back to the back to the franchisees um there's sometimes decent support sometimes there's not great support from the franchise from franchisor um 
Uh, I can't really nail one uh, nail it down though. One thing that's they're all doing wrong because it's it's very tough in general to run a fitness business. You have to have so many different skill sets, from marketing to you know the financial organization to the leadership part. There's so much to run, and so I think uh, what happened is a lot a lot of these fitness franchisees got into the business not realizing how many skill sets you need to have and be great at, not just good at. And so, you know, maybe that was in the, in the marketing, there was turnkey, right? And that's what they say, right. it's a turnkey business. And so I, I've see, personally seen a ton of these gyms struggle out there. Profit margins are low, and they've struggled. But they're still around, you know what I mean? They're still surviving, I guess you could call it, before they resell their locations. Well, before we dive a little deep into each of these kind of things, mm-hmm. um, where do you see box fitness going in the next 10 years, and, and why? Box fitness in reference to like, um, like um, LA Fitness and Choose. And uh, no, no those, those are more for me. Those are more like um, corporate traditional gyms. I'm talking about like um, uh, Orange Theory and those kind of box gyms, like those that are very niche or whatnot. Mm, well, I wouldn't call those box gyms. So, so I'd call those boutique. Boutique. Okay. Those are still boutiques. Yeah. Um, Orange Theory got in at a very interesting time in the. Uh, in the trends of fitness and they were the first really to brand and they did a great job with their colors and they did a great job with their branding and their scheming and their marketing and they grew very fast and they were the first to do the boot camp style and be successful at it and a lot of their locations are absolutely crushing it but then again they have high turnover just like every other fitness business so i think the ones that are successful are the ones that are able to keep their general managers their coaches um and then grow to several locations um, yeah, I see them as a, a successful, successful franchise. I don't know how they're going to do in the future. I guess we could get into that. Well, hundred percent, you know, like, cause that's what we're doing with, with us is we're figuring out what the next step in future fitness and health and wellness is going to be. Mm-hmm. And we know that it's going to be preventative medicine because that's where everything is going. Mm-hmm. Right. So how do they fit into that mold down the road? If, uh, they're kind of, they're, they're kind of stuck on their ways with how they train. Right. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, super their, their, their good. Their models are kind of just. Yeah, no, great. Uh, perfect question. Uh, I think they have a place, and I think they'll be successful. Honestly, uh, be, they're not. They're going to serve the purpose as a general fitness place. Think like uh, F forty five, right? Or like okay. Fit Body Boot Camp. Um, gosh, they're exploding now. But I think these boot camp styles, if they're run really well, um, and they they're relying on parent marketing, and they're in a great location. And, and they got lucky, right? There's a, there's some luck to it too, aside from hard work. I think they'll always have their place. Uh, I think people are always going to search for other other avenues as well. So I've seen in personal training, I've seen people that go to F45, go to Orange Theory, but also have a much more expensive membership at a personalized place. That's common. You're seeing a lot of double ups all totally. across. All across. Super that, common. Someone in a traditional gym and then they want a little bit more and they don't take the classes at the, the box gym mm-hmm. because they suck. And they're going to places like Orange Theory, Row House, these other places, right? Mm-hmm. Like Stretch Lab and all mm-hmm. that, and went out to get their extra stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. With our model coming out, like, hey, listen, we're going to have a bit down the road, we're going to have massage therapy, we're going to have chiropractic, infrared, we're going to have all this other stuff. Where do you see them fitting in in that market with that if, if someone's doing all of it? Because our, our, everything that we buy right now is based off of convenience. Pretty much everything, yeah. from our groceries to our products from Amazon. Everything's everything's convenience based. Yeah. So, how do they conveniently fit into this market down the road? Yeah, I mean, I don't look at anyone as competitors or competition whatsoever. It's not like, oh, we have to win, so you have to lose, vice versa. There's nothing at all like that. Um, the there'll always be a place for that. I think if you can incorporate more personalized. Uh, we can call it medicine or whatever, more personalized attention. Because if you go to these big box places, or not big box, but if you go to like, um, you know, boot camp workout, there's a very lack of strength training, right? You're doing right. dumbbells, you're doing these light weights. The big goal for me is to get people into strength training to improve their body mechanics and move them into strength training. It's the having sustainable muscle mass is the best way to burning fat, uh, to getting your hormones to equilibrium, um, to having your body at homeostasis is having uh, healthy quality muscle. And the only way to do that is to progressive overload or to build strength training. So these boot camp style workouts, while great and may always have a place in the industry, aren't going to be the long-term solution. So, so I'm fine with them existing, and I actually support a lot of them. Um, but they're not like the, the, the be-all, end-all answer to, to personalized health. 
So let's say someone is going to a place like Orange Theory, Row House, Stride, what, wherever, mm-hmm. wherever they're going. Where does that leave the the customer if they don't have everything they need, right? So like these, you see these people that like are going to these places that are still not reaching their fitness goals and paying all this money. Yeah. Where do you see these clients down the road with with all that, right? Because you said there's a lot of turnover. Yeah, big time. Uh, like where do you see that going down the road? Is like, listen, like if if I'm not getting everything from here, or why not? I know they're not competitions for us yeah, to, to down the yeah, road here, yeah. but like where does where do they see this down the road because there's only so much you can do with uh, some place like row house with just rowers mm-hmm. right that model is pretty stuck mm-hmm. right and that's a great place to go if you want to do a class-based workout with that kind of stuff yeah yeah but what i'm what i'm really interested in is where the customer is left hanging where their promised fitness goals through these places so can i tell a short story here yes. uh so yes. i took a when i moved to colorado i took a job at a place called the row house which you're referring to and uh I was there. I, I wasn't there a long period of time before before I, I fell into the corporate, you know, vibe of everything was salesy. But here's, but while I was there, I realized we were just rowing, and the people who row love rowing. They love it, and I love the concept of row house. I really do. Uh, the founder I got to chat with, Deborah F- Frolik, Frul- I can't pronounce her last name right now, but um, uh, the concept is amazing. And so when I got there, I realized. These people don't know how to hinge correctly. You can't teach rowing without hinging. So I set up personal training, additional personal training on top of Row House. I might have mentioned it to corporate that I was doing it. And we started picking up clients, four clients, five clients. And I started personal training in between. And then I was at the point where I wanted to talk to you know the president of the company and say, hey, listen, there's a huge opportunity for personalized rowing lessons on top of class rowing lessons. Um, and then, you know, some stuff happened, but it, it's crazy to get to your question is like, that's the innovative thinking is like how to, how to create more with just these, you know, but people are going to these locations for what, what are they going for? Workouts. Okay. Community. Community. Yep. Um, that's about all self-confidence self- okay, yeah, to self- connect with people, community, yeah. to build bonds and strength, to have fun, to increase dopamine, right? That's it. That's why they're coming, to improve their health. So how do we do that best is really the question that we should be asking ourselves. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I, I just uh, I just don't see a – I mean, like, normal box gyms are having a hard time keeping up. Like, I, I used to see Gold's Gym everywhere. It used to be the one place you can get a travel pass yeah. in Godboy, and I don't see any of them anymore. And, like, the fact that these, these traditional-style gyms that we grew up with, what built us into who we are – are slowly fading away. Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing the same kind of trend with these boutique-style gyms. It's like, well, that's a great idea, and I'll do it for a little while, but what about plateauing? What about nutrition? Mm-hmm. What about recovery? What about all these other things? And they're not they're, – they're teaching, uh, you know, workout styles and classes, but they're not even getting on your basic things like hinge joints that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. So there's just a – for me, there's a huge hole for people going into those. And if – hey, listen, guys. If you if you love these kind of workouts, like don't – I'm being Mr. Negative Nancy here. <laughs> but I just think there's a lot more to fitness than that, and they don't – aren't able to talk about that because it doesn't fit their model. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, the industry shifted. Box gyms are essentially dead. I – actually like lifting occasionally in in a box gym personally i love the amount of equipment they have and now they're becoming ghost towns but if you look at the old la fitnesses or some of the old like 24-hour fitnesses and you look at like the structure of their businesses you could tell they're failing financially right you can tell like they used to have 24 sales cubicles if you go to some of these old la fitnesses they'd have 24 sales cubicles where it you could tell it used to be bumping and then in the 90s when Anytime Fitness came out, when Snap Fitness came out, and even predating Snap Fitness, who got their idea from a company called? Aunt Jemima's. <laughs> no, I do love that syrup, though. That was the best syrup ever. <laughs> they were it. From a, yeah, I know they did. I was so upset about that. Sorry. <laughs> from a company called Curves. Was, that was, was Curves? Initially the most, that's where Anytime Fitness and Snap no. Fitness got their original idea from. Yes. Curves was massively successful and then took a meteoric fall, right? Um, and so we can get into that, why they took that fall. And this ties into the whole po- point of this episode is like the functioning of these boutique fitness franchises. And it, it comes into the questions that you're asking me, which really is what is the difference between what makes these successful and what makes these not successful? And the answer is 
are these fad diet are these fads right are we climbing on a ladder to strobe lights um which can be fun you know and i'm not knocking if you love doing that great or is this something that's gonna this service is gonna be something that's gonna develop and last forever because people will get sick of get sick of um a flash in the pan right but if, but 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 they're not gonna get sick of personalized you know hey here's what your posture is here's how this works okay here's the here's what how we're going to change this lifting here's strength training here's a, your genetics this isn't developed we're going to customize your program around your genetics as w- the science develops around genetics we're going to incorporate that here's our recovery protocol uh and i i do see some businesses getting involved in this um but then again it's a it's a funny game it takes a lot of effort marketing this and not being gimmicky well yeah and uh there's certain other places that are trying our 360 approach <laughs> that they're, they're trying to to do it, but you know you cannot be a circle if you're 270 degrees. So that that's that's for you guys listening that they, that you guys go out to box gyms, you guys go out to these studios. Is remember that there's a lot more to getting fit than just going to take these classes. You know, you guys got to go out get your hormones checked, get your blood work done, go get your genetics done because you you don't know if this is actually working out for you because we went over a video today. Very interesting. There is a certain uh, allele or S&P called RS1267819. And with this certain person, they actually had this variant absent. And it's a fat burning gene, right? So what does that mean? So someone who has this has a harder time burning fat doing cardio-based activities. So if you have are missing this variant gene and you're doing these boutique style classes that are cardio heavy, you might not be getting anywhere because you're fighting your own predepositions. Yeah, there's stress. The cord you have to take into consult, uh, take into consideration your cortisol too. Cortisol is a pretty simple um, hormone to to understand. And, uh, so for those listening, it's a stress hormone for, yep. Yep. It's the stress hormone. And if you are in the fight or flight response, um, and you can even be predisposed to have a higher cortisol levels, which we all know those people, they're type A's, they're go-getters, they're runners, they're coffee drinkers, they're readers. Um, and you're crushing your, your cardio workouts constantly. Let me just come out and tell you just so if you're not, if you haven't caught the message, strength training is infinitely better than cardio when done safely. Strength training. Oh, 100%. 100%. And what, going back to what kind of what Brett was talking about, hinge motions, if you guys go to YouTube and check out, Brett's been putting up some a lot of good videos on Ascent Performance Training's YouTube channel about how to do proper hinge motions, deadlifts, and whatnot. <clears throat> and these are all really crucial to if you're going to these box-style gyms knowing, or these boutique-style gyms, knowing the proper form and function because they're not, not, not the time these coaches aren't going to have time for one-on-one with you guys and could, uh, down the road could either get you injured or you could be doing a workout that's not, pre, not not based on your predeposition and you just could be fighting nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And let me tag on to that real quick on that, uh, onto that cortisol. So some of the, res- some, some of the functions of cortisol, uh, obviously stress response, which you talked about, uh, regulates your metabolism, which is huge. Okay. Also, uh, your immune system modulation. So uh, it can have an anti-inflammatory effect on the immune system. Uh, helps regulate the immune response and suppresses inflammation, which is important for managing the body's reaction to injury or infection. Uh, even regulates blood pressure and your sleep-wake cycle. So your hormone, you can get a, uh, an idea of how much cortisol affects your daily life. And so when you're doing the wrong workouts... And you're wondering, you know, why they're not working the best for you. And they're great. Maybe they're not working the best for you. You start to look elsewhere. And that's kind of what we want to do and what I want to do. And I think what drew me into the genetics and, and uh, getting blood work and checking your hormones and then looking at posture and then, you know, all that stuff. Well, yeah. And it's, and again, like that we're, when looking at it from, let's say from you guys listening right now standpoint. You guys are probably, some of you are probably going to the gym. Some of you are probably doing meal preps. Some of you might be doing a chiropractor. I, I'm not 100% sure, but not a lot of us are putting it all together. And that's a problem to look, look, at, look at health from a different perspective like Brett and I have been trying to do with this health profiling is, listen, if you're, let's just say if you're not sleeping right, your workouts are going to be shit. Your diet's going to be off. Your, your schedule's going to be off. If, you're, if your diet's crap, your workout's going to be off. Your sleep's going to be off. Mm-hmm. All these are synergetic and 
the, the thing with the fitness industry now is it's all broken into pieces, right? It's all different parts and pieces, and it's up to you guys as a listener to find out, which is terrible because when you guys go into these box gyms or boutique gyms and explain what you guys want, they're not fully able to understand it because they don't have the right perspective because they don't have the knowledge. A lot of those, yeah, they're all certified trainers, or whatnot, but they're not certified nutritionists. They don't work in genetics. They don't, they, don't, they, they don't have any experience with hormones or people with thyroid deficiencies or, or whatnot. And the, the fact is, like, you're, you're thinking about your doctor talking to your personal training or nutritionist about your thyroid. you got someone else talking about your sleep studies, and no one's putting it all together. And that's what's frustrating for people that are listening, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's why these box gyms and boutique gyms, and I, I think a lot of those are going to be gone to the wayside down the road. And I think I think things like individual like personalized gy- or individual gyms like hey we're gonna ha- we're gonna we're gonna renovate a school, and every single classroom is gonna have digital weights in it. You'll have a personal trainer assigned to you, assigned to you to go there to help you out if you want one, or not. But you got thirty five minutes in the cubicle or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's where it's going. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. It's more one on one based everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I like I I like people moving in general. So if somebody is doing something active round of applause i I personally am not gonna poo poo on anybody who's going out and doing whether it's a fad workout whatever it is if you're active awesome congrats keep killing it keep crushing it keep finding ways to to connect to your community and be happy that's the way i look at it but but with personal training and one-on-one attention and posture and and some of this other stuff it's it's just a leg up it's the next it's the next best thing really and I think I'm I'm so uh, aggressive about this portion of it. And I, yeah, you're right, good. like 100. So good. 100. percent Like just bringing it down. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it when people are when people are just moving. Like honestly, like what else is there in life other than to find ways to smile, find the humor in it, connect with your neighbor and your friends and family, and find something you love. Honestly, and, and then take care of your your vehicle, which is your body. Your body is your vehicle. That's what gets you on. That's life. So if they're going to at f- forty five, if they're going to row house and they have fun doing it, great. But this is but personal training is it, the industry. The industry is different from our perspective. The industry is the business aspect of it, of where these gyms came from, right, and how they're functioning today, and what's going to be coming in the future. And the future is personalized care. Yes. Everyone's trying to do it right now. Doctors are. We have a physician that's we're connected with now. Can't wait to see him on Saturday. Yeah, talk I'm to super him. pumped to see him. And he's prescribing. They have um, uh, oxygen therapy for skin and for like it's incredible. So, you know, everything's good. It's all good. But but but, I hate the sales portion and the, and the disingenuity, of of selling memberships constantly and to think and 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 for that to be the mission and for some of these companies and these boutique places that that are fatty i that's what i hated as a general manager i didn't like it it was too and corporate ruined it for a lot of us and you were at stride yeah i felt the same i i felt really bad for the owners of that location you're talking about people that love fitness and that's they wanted to do and they wanted to provide it back to the community and then you go sit in these corporate meetings the entire time, and then these these people that are bought into the franchise are bled dry mm. with with things that they shouldn't even need to be spending money on, like pay per click campaigns to a company that doesn't work for them. And then they're, then the next thing you know, like they're they're out all this, and they're they're having to make it work for their family. And for me, that's where the idea of corporate fitness has has really screwed up from the owner all the way down to the employee, because people are units and not people. Yeah, and you, you think about. The world's best products out there, uh, Xboxes, Playstations, you know, really, really great look, great mm-hmm. TVs or whatnot with, with the brands behind them. The reason that they sell is because they got a good product. They don't, they don't need to market too hard. I was like, listen, totally. like, we'll, we'll show you a little bit of a teaser about what we do, but that's all you need to know because mm-hmm. we have a, pri- a, a proven product that works. Mm-hmm. And when I get too salesy when I was when I was working for that or trying to sell someone that, I'm like, I'm not selling someone on a product that. I'm 100 percent sure it's gonna work for them because I worked in genetics, and mm-hmm. I'm like, I can't, I can't lie to people with that. It's like, mm-hmm. no, this is gonna be the greatest workout of your entire life. You bet, 
They don't, Mr. VA from Virginia. You, sound, you definitely sound like you're from Virginia. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's true. But, um, country road, take, take me, me home. home. <laughs> but yeah, but then you, and, and then like we talked about this before, like the hell loop, you see people come out of that. They don't know what's going on. It's just like, for me, the system is very broken because people are numbers and the product, the, the product itself is not well developed enough. Mm. So g- tying your idea back in, because I want to be the glue that that holds this whole episode together, is is the reflection from from these leadership positions down onto these general managers, franchisees, coaches. It it go that that message is passed along to the members, and we used to get yeah. on we used to get on a Zoom call. Um, with the president of one of these companies, and there was, I don't know how many of us, 50 of us general managers on there, and he, he would go around and he'd be like, hey, uh, so who had the most new uh, membership units? Who, who had the most units? And we'd always, everything was obsessed about units and then, and then activities. That was it. Units and activities. How many activities did you have? 50 DMs? Did you do 50 emails? Did you do 100 whatever? And what a, like, what a horrible horrible way to run a business like i don't care if you're the leadership and you are thinking hey membership units and activities totally understand that don't ever pass that along to you to your general managers or the people below you you want to inspire them and speak to them uh, on their daily language because what you talk to them about they're going to reiterate that to their clients so if you're if you're pumping their head full of new membership units and dollars and activities that's what they're going to be thinking about when they speak to their members okay that was the biggest thing that was wrong and is still wrong with corporate fitness boutique franchises and and I was sick of it totally sick of it you were sick of it i know you were cuz yeah. you told me man 100% you know exactly what i'm talking about with this it was horrible leadership and it you know it, what makes me upset is because it affects the members the the yeah. me- it affects their programs it affects the coaches uh, and this is still going on today and if you out there on this podcast are, are listening and you're a gm and I know you feel me. Go ahead and give this episode a share to your friends. We feel you. We whole, wholeheartedly understand the pain you're going through when you're trying to make changes in people's lives and all they can think about is sales. Before we get into our little selfless plugs here with our stuff, I want to leave all of you guys with one phrase that I was – I when I left corporate wellness, um, that could be the game changer for, for – if, if any franchise owners listening out there, anybody that's running this stuff – I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this. Imagine if you guys cared as much about your shareholders as you do your customers. Wait, other way around, right? Imagine if you cared as much about your customers oh, sorry, as you, as you, as you your, did your shareholders. Your shareholders. Sorry, imagine, yeah. Sorry, thank you. That's the thing is like everything's about making sure that that those quarterly reports are great. Doing this and the, the problem when it, like Brett said when it goes top to bottom is that's what your community, that's what your brand is about. And mm. that's the way it's sold, and people see through that shit. Totally, don't. people do see through that shit, and it, it, you might not see it now, but people see it down the road, mm-hmm. right? So make sure, make sure you guys remember, like, if you're at a gym or you're at a place that is you're you're treated like a number, not a person, that might not be the best community for you to be in. And for us to get fit, we need to, especially people that are having a hard time with it, need to be in the best environment they could be in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that goes with this podcast too, like. Honestly, picking topics, right? Figuring out, hey, what do we want to talk about? Just anything we feel that is relevant in the fitness and wellness industry and any person that we feel is going to have a, a, an opinion that's going to add value to what we're doing. There's, not, there's no agenda on, on, on this podcast. Other than that, really, is just to talk about fitness and wellness and be involved in the conversation. That's, that's kind of what we want from this. 100% and then staying up for the people that aren't stood up for Mm. You know, people that aren't being ta- you know, talked about, like these, again, like you said, these general managers in these positions that are just, they're getting it from both ends, Shh. right? They're just getting shafted at both ends. They're not, I mean, they're not getting paid a lot, like mm-hmm. tons of responsibility. They're pretty good because the entirety of a business owner's responsibility for a probably 20% of the pay. If you're out there right now and you're young and you're hungry and you want to get in the fitness industry and you would like a general manager position, I can get you one or at least one to five offers within a week. You can get into the fitness industry immediately. That's how many job openings there are. 
Okay. You'll get a taste of this. You'll learn a lot and you'll get a chance to, to put this on your resume and, and see what it's like to, you know, run a fitness facility or at least move towards in the direction of that. Well, yeah. And you know, at some of these places are even getting rid of general managers as a whole. <sighs> Just getting rid Are of they? Them. Really? Oh, I believe yeah. it. I totally believe it. When I, when I left, a month, a month later, I looked up their jobs, and they're not even hiring a GM. Just, I totally believe it. A lot of these businesses are closing, and we didn't get into it today, but there's a, there's a little bit deeper dive of franchises and how they're able to survive. Um, you know, basically, you know, the franchisee pays, what, $50,000 to open the location for the franchise fee, and then they're paying 14% royalties, then they're buying all the equipment, and then when they close, what do you think happens to it? They still owe money. They still owe money, and guess who buys back the location at a fraction of the cost? The, the franchisor. Yep. <laughs> Takes back over the location and then resells it. That's what's happening with these franchises. So... Well, Guys, we're just we're sick of people being taken advantage of, and then as well as people that are trying to get fit, getting frustrated and finding them the right ways out. You know, just finding the right ways out, and that's why we're just very excited. That you guys have you know kept along with this journey with us on our twenty fifth mm. episode. We broke seven hundred downloads this week um, because of you guys, all the way from Nigeria, South America, South Africa, Tanzania, Chile. Um, all across the United States, UK, uh, Germany, Austria, France, Belgium, India, Australia. We could not have done this without you guys by mm. any means necessary. And thank you so much. And if, if it won't be too much, make sure you guys go rate, share, and like this podcast. Every little bit helps us out. Also, if you guys want to know more information and just learn more about our idea on uh, preventative health and the way we take it, check out the book uh, – Health Profiling, edited by Brett Dutari and written by me, uh, as well as you guys have got to check out Brett's fucking blogs. They're <laughs> incredible. Explicit tab on this. Yeah, i got to put explicit on this one. Now you have to. Yeah. yeah uh, incredible stuff. He's really speaking from the heart on things that are really impactful and, and would help you guys out through day-to-day -day lives with breathing, going on hikes, everything. So go check that out for sure. training dot com backslash blogs go check that out uh, we have our grand opening on the 12th if you guys are out here please 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 come stop by from 11 to 3 p.m on the 12th at 1472 jersey street also known as a performance training can i do a quick little uh last thing so brrr, thank you so much you guys we love you uh love talking about this stuff too with you uh to all the owners out there uh of fitness centers um you know, let's connect. Let's stay in contact. We do have our business wellness services available. Um, we are working with other locations currently, helping them um, staff leadership. Uh, and that goes to new, new trainers and new coaches as well. Uh, if you'd like to get into the fitness industry, we can literally find you a job tomorrow. It, it, if you would like to break into an industry that you can make an impact on, uh, or like I said, you yourself have a gym, hit us up, DM us, message trip, Whatever you got to do, message me, and uh, we, we're here to connect and grow this uh, as fast as possible and, and do it the right way. So, well said, man. We're just trying. We're just trying to take our approach to businesses, people, everyone that'll give us an ear. So, uh, again, thank you guys. If you guys want more information, go to www.ascentperformancetraining.com. Go and click the contact, and we'll get back to you ASAP. Peace. Have a good day.